Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and welcome to our blessed worship service. Let us open this worship service with a word of prayer. Dear God, we come before your presence. We give you glory and honor and praise. We pray for the working of the Holy Spirit in this worship service. Lord, may we receive a pardon grace to be able to realize, be able to understand your word and take steps according to your will for the glory and honor of your name. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This week's message says, it is by grace that we realize God's word. Scripture reading comes from the book of Mark chapter 8, verse 14 to verse 21. I'll read as you follow in your Bible, this is what the word says. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the living of the Pharisees and the living of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five laws for the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? They say to him, 12. They say to them, 12. Also, when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many? large baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said seven. So he said to them, how is it you do not understand? May the Lord bless his word. Amen. Amen. It is by the grace of God that we can understand God's word. It is by the grace of God that we can realize the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to verse 20, when Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say I am? And then he proceeded to ask his disciples, them giving an answer of the people's view. He asked his disciples, what about you? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That time, Jesus told Peter, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Hallelujah. It is the Father in heaven who revealed to Peter who Jesus is. I pray that the Father in heaven will pour a of grace upon your life that you will be able to realize his word even in this hour. Hallelujah. The gospel is not about information but transformation. Let's experience the transforming power of the Lord upon our lives. The power of the gospel changes us to spiritual beings. And God pours abundant grace into the hearts that long for the word. I pray that as you sit there, you be longing to hear the word of God. Because to those who are longing for the word of the Lord, the Lord pours abundant grace upon them 
even allowing them to realize. Hallelujah. Now the book of the book of Mark chapter 8 begins with a miracle of seven loaves and two fish that our Lord Jesus Christ performed. Now you may think that it is a repetition of the miracle of five loaves and two fish that Jesus performed at which we saw as we went through the book of Mark chapter 6 and especially verse 30. Though similar, these are completely different and separate miracles. Hallelujah. Fundamentally, the miracle of the five loaves and two fish was performed towards the Jews, whereas the miracle of the seven loaves and two fish that fed 4,000 people was performed towards the Gentiles. In a gender region, in a region where Gentiles lived, Jesus was sharing the word of God to them. And to the Gentiles, the word of God was so sweet that people did not want to go home for three good days. I pray that the word of God will be sweet, will sound sweet in your ears, even in this hour. Hallelujah. And may you get deeply rooted in it, even as you continue to receive it. Hallelujah. Now, as these generations continue to listen to the word of God for three days, Jesus saw that all the food that people had brought was gone. And he had compassion towards them. Some of these Gentiles had come from far away. And Jesus thought that if they were to return without eating, they will become exhausted and can even faint on the way. So he decided to provide them with the physical food to nourish their physical bodies. And the disciples observed the miracle of multiplying these loaves and feeding a multitude of people. But even after experiencing the miracles, the disciples were still not realizing. That's why I'm uh, emphasizing that. It is by grace that we realize. May the Lord pour abundant grace upon your life even this hour. Hallelujah. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. To experience abundant grace and focus on the right thing. Focus on the word. Focus and continually pray that Lord allow me to realize your word. Allow me to understand your word. Allow me to understand what you are speaking to me in this hour. Hallelujah. Point number one. The establishment of the word as imprint, root and nature. Verse 15 of the text that we have read, it says, Then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the living of the Pharisees and the living of Herod. Hallelujah. Living or yeast, in other words, can symbolize a negative thing or a positive thing. It have a, a, a negative meaning or a positive meaning. And in this passage, it has a negative meaning. It means the spread of a negative influence. It implies religious form, formalism, outward shows, and hypocrisy. The Pharisees were concerned about outward appearance. They were always talking about material things. And this kind of lifestyle, this religious kind of perspective influenced the disciples. 
That's how we see the disciples were only focused on bread and live it and live it. That's why they were blaming each other for not have brought bread with them. And Jesus asked them a very important question. Let's see verse 17 to verse 18. But Jesus said, Jesus, but Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? Hallelujah. The disciples were influenced by a wrong perspective, a wrong point of view, looking only on the physical things and not being able to understand spiritual things. Why did this happen? Or why was this happening in the life of disciples? It's because the gospel had not yet become their imprints, roots and nature. I bless you in the name of the Lord that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ becomes your imprints, your roots, and your nature. Hallelujah. Because it did not become their imprints, roots, and nature, when problems arose, they immediately began grumbling. They began grumbling and complaining of situation. They were following the footsteps of their ancestors. You remember the ancestors of the Israelites? They had spent 40 years in the wilderness. And whenever a problem or a crisis arose, they would always complain. They would always grumble. Why? Because God's desire, God's will was not yet imprinted in them. It did not change their nature. They were not really rooted in the will of the Lord. Hallelujah. And this implies that changing one's old nature is not easy. You have to keep on discounting old thoughts. Thoughts of unbelief. Thoughts of complaints. Thoughts of grumbling. Each and every day we have to keep on discarding that. Because that is destructive to your work of faith. Instead, we need to daily pray for the feeling of of the Holy Spirit to be filled with the Word of God in our lives. Hallelujah. And that's why I want to remind you it is wrong to imagine that one service a week will be enough for you to change your nature to gospel nature. You need midweek worship service, you need morning worship service, midday worship service, evening worship service, because it's not easy to change our natures. We need to continue to receive spiritual nourishment so that we can grow. The gospel to be imprinted in us, to be rooted in us, and to change our natures, the natures of the gospel. Hallelujah. In so doing, our natures can change to men and women of evangelism and missions. Hallelujah. And for that purpose to continually receive training, training in the gospel. Hallelujah. According to theologians, Jesus spent three quarters of his life training his disciples. And the message that he relayed to them started flowing out after the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the message started flowing out. So as much as we continue to receive training in the gospel, let's continually pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit. And that message will flow to our fields as life. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember as I told you in the introduction, the gospel is not about information, but transformation. Our life has to be transformed day after day. Hallelujah. 
Point number two, spiritual training that changes perspective. Verse 13, uh, let me read from verse 11 to verse 13. It says, Then the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven, testing him. But he is sighing deeply in his spirit and said, Where does this generation seek a sign? I surely I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, departed to the other side. Hallelujah. The Pharisees came to Jesus criticizing him and demanding a sign from heaven. In other words, they were demanding proof that Jesus' power was from God. Their hearts were hardened. They were not responding to the gospel. And that's why they interpreted, the, they interpreted God's word from their own standards. Their own standards is that they were self-centered. That's Genesis 3 problem. They were material-centered. They only became flesh. Seeking for things of the flesh. Genesis 6 problem. And then they were striving for worldly success. And worldly acknowledgement. To be acknowledged. Their own pop popularity. Making a name for themselves. As we see in Genesis chapter 11. With these wrong natures. We cannot realize the word of God. We have to change our natures through constant training, constantly getting rooted in the gospel, constantly imprinting the gospel in our hearts and change into only Christ. We should live for only Christ, only the kingdom of God. And only by the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In so doing, we need to change. We need to shift our perspective. From being self-centered, material-centered, worldly success-centered. To being only Christ-centered. Only God's kingdom-centered. And only by the feeling, the working, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's the kind of life that the Lord desires. And within the guidance of the Holy Spirit, within the working of the Holy Spirit, we will realize what the Lord intends for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. So, from this point onwards, purpose to change and make it your prayer that within the grace of God, you will change from being centered on self, being centered on material things, being centered on world success, to being centered on only Christ, on the kingdom of God, and only the feeling, working, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In conclusion, I want to say this. A globally renowned scientist by the name Einstein, he said this, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. How have you been doing things? If you've been focusing on self, material and world success. If you keep on doing that over and over again and expect different results, that is insanity. Let us change our perspective and let us focus on only Christ, live for only the kingdom of God and let's daily be filled and experience the working and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And within the grace of God, will continue to realize heavenly mysteries in our life. God bless you so much. Let's pray. 
Dear everlasting Father, we want to thank you for your grace upon our lives. It is by your grace that we realize your word. It is by your grace that we can understand your way, O oh God. Lord Jesus, we pray for the feeling, working, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit in every step we take. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.